Hi guys, Rebecca here from the Ship Shape Shop. I'm currently sitting in my car um, and I'm making some final notes. Tonight I'm doing a presentation to um, Rotary and Takapuna and I'm going to give them some tips on decluttering and downsizing in particular. Um, so I thought that would be something interesting for you guys to share today, uh, to share with you guys today, um, something a little bit different to what I usually do. Um, I'll try and wrap it up in a couple of minutes. I've got my um, notes written down here in my lap, so I'm going to keep like glancing down and a little bit weird. But anyway, here we go. Um, so my first tip is not to automatically save things for your kids and your grandkids. Um, ask them what they want. Ask them if there's anything in particular that they want to take off your hands. And if the answer is yes, then get them to take it now. So particularly when you're downsizing and you're moving to um, a smaller house, you don't want to become the dumping ground for your family stuff or your kids stuff or a storage depot um, for people who might want things in the future. So if they want it badly enough, then in my opinion, they should take it now. Um, the next thing is ask your kids if they can help now. Um, if you've got a large house and you're moving into a smaller house, you've probably accumulated um, years worth of things. Um, and that can be really difficult physically um, to go through everything, but also quite an emotional experience. And what I've found with the clients that I've worked with is that that's a really lovely opportunity to spend some time and to hear their stories. Um, I have experience with clients whose kids haven't wanted to be involved at all. And actually, it's a real shame because um, there's there's some real there's some real richness in spending that time with um, with with that, that they've missed out on spending with their parents um, that they're never probably going to get again, and they're missing out on stories um, and hearing some family history and interesting little anecdotes that once um, once that person has moved on or passed on, you're going to completely miss out on really funny little quirks that um, just kind of add to that spoken history that we don't really spend that much time gathering anymore. So um, a really cool tip is to ask your kids if they want to help out, if they can come and spend a couple of hours on a weekend working through a room with you um, and and um, having a laugh as you dig through boxes and go through um, cupboards and find um, relics from years gone by. Um, that, I don't know, especially if you've got your grandkids involved and there might be something that they've never even ever seen before um, that could be a real conversation starter and there's an opportunity for um, sharing history again there. Um, and my last tip is some rooms take a longer time than you think. Um, and in my experience, those rooms are garages and sheds. Um, if you think that you're probably going to get through that in a day, you probably are not going to get through those in a day. Um, because there's so many small, fiddly bits, movable pieces. Um, so what you want to do when you're dealing with those spaces where you have lots of small moving parts is categorise before you decide if you're going to keep or if you're going to throw away. Um, and the reason we categorise first is because when you put together um, in a pile all of your all of your little collections of nails, like you might grab a box of nails and go, mm, yeah, I need, I, I'm probably going to need those nails. And then you put them in the nail place and then half an hour later you come across another little box of nails and you're like oh, okay cool I'll just go and put that over there if you put them all in one place at once you're going to go actually I've got 10,000 nails and I'm never going to hammer in all of those nails so I can probably let go of some of those so once you can physically see how many things you have in a collection you can make a more informed decision about whether or not you want to keep it um, garages are great spaces for um, lots of little nails, nuts and bolts, gardening stuff. Um, the number of garages I've worked in where I see um, like lots of pots, garden pots that are um, kind of squirreled away all over the place and it's just because people don't know how many they have but when we pull them all together and like, okay well I've got I've got 45 little tiny pots that I'm never ever going to use then it's much much easier to let, thing go, let those things go. So those are my tips. Don't automatically save things for your kids or grandkids. Ask them what they want and don't be offended if they say, no, I don't want anything. Thanks, mum or dad. Um, just let it go out of your life. Donate it. Ask your kids if they can help you now um, and spend that time together while you still can. 
um, and finally uh, allocate enough time to tackle those bigger jobs where there's going to be lots of small fiddly bits and pieces like garages and sheds and categorize before you choose whether or not you're going to keep or let go so you can um, make an informed decision about the actual volume that you're considering keeping. So then those are my top tips, love to hear what you think. Um, hope you guys are having a great start to your weeks, beautiful day at the moment, a little bit windy, probably expecting to see some more debris on the road later on because it's been blowing a gale up here in Auckland. Hope you guys are all doing well, talk soon, bye!